This week on the Ritual Misery Program podcast thing, uh, <laughs> we're not live. Well, kind of live. We're 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 undead. Yes, we're unlive. Uh, I think. <laughs> Sort of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that sounds about right. We're going to have us a super fight. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 264 for Thursday, the 19th of November, 2020. Kind of. This is your two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. We don't have a guest because, well, we're doing this shit last minute early early last minute uh, how would that's you weird yeah let's 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 use the old industry term pre-recorded <laughs> <laughs> this program has been pre-recorded that's my it has not been taped in in front of a live studio yeah, audience that's that's my best george carlin right there um hey dude it's uh it's tuesday but this is a thursday show so from now on we're just gonna talk about it like it's thursday or tuesday whichever one we talk about because well that's how we are <laughs> the day starts with a t that's yeah. for day <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's t day um dude mandalorian came out on friday that yeah, man holy shit yeah so you are someone who hasn't watched all of the animated series i'm somebody that's watched every last damn second of them and uh what did you think enjoyable show i take it right i thought it was good there's a there's a little bit of uh i don't not sure how to put it (laughs) other than my burp that just decided to come up in the middle of the show don't drink soda during shows um it, there, there was a little bit of a disconnect there. Like there was something I should have known but didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, it was mostly like the ways of the Mandalore, right? Like you have the the some Mandalorians have the helmets they can't take off, and then all of a sudden there's some that supposedly do. Like that was a little mm-hmm. bit of a. I I got it by the end of the episode that it's kind of a, a separate branch. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it well, was the definitely does explain it uh, in yeah. like three or four sentences. Um, yeah. So in, for me, I had the opposite because when the when the Mandalorian began last season, so a year ago, I thought it was super odd when they were talking about you can't take your helmet off. If you take your helmet off, then you can't put it back on. You're not a real Mandalorian anymore and all that kind of stuff. I was like, what the fuck? Like, that's never been a thing. And. and now I have clarity as well. Hmm. But I, I had a different starting point with it. Right, right. And it, but it was a good episode. It was fun. Um, at the end of it, I was like, man, he should have just, like, what uh, is he just going to go for this ride? Like, he's not where he needs to be or where he's supposed to be going. And then mm. it kind of came to a quick resolution, which was fine because it was all very fast paced action. But yeah, it was, it would definitely kept me. I didn't expect the episode to end that soon, even though it was right on time. Yeah. Like it seemed like it was really Uh, getting in the thick of it right as it bounced out. Yeah. Super exciting episode. And I think it, it probably stands well enough uh, without having all of the, uh, you know, history of of characters and, and like dark saber stuff and all that kind of stuff. Um, But for somebody like me that has, has uh, deep, deep dove deep dove somebody that's that's deep divin i don't know deep i don't dived, know the word dive so, somebody that that has uh, gone on the animated journey uh with star wars like you're gonna have a full-on nerdgasm with this episode and i'm pretty sure this week's if not this week's next week's like i i know like you're probably gonna hear my nerdgasm all the way up in alaska uh when a certain thing happens um yes yeah, it's, 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 I, I yeah. love this show. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, you know, it wasn't very good. Um, RitualMisery.com? Yeah, no, that site sucked. God, it was <laughs> awful. Uh, um, using the past tense there, it sucked, as in it no longer does? It does not. I'm not saying it's great now, but it's at least functional and looks like it was supposed to look. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, yeah. So, uh, what's, uh, what, what, what happened? Like what, what's, 
What's going on over there? Well, Jenny Josephson mentioned on Let's Talk About Star Wars that she directed people to richandmisery.com in order to get to Let's Not Talk About Thrones, a show that I do with her and Richard Gunther. Mm -hmm. That lit a fire in my ass because I have been ignoring doing anything with richandmisery.com because it was in just shambles. Like it functionally worked to serve the web, the, the podcast, but it did not, it was not anything of a hub of ritual misery. that it, it pronounced to be on the homepage. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, I started working on that yesterday. I got it functional yesterday afternoon. And then this morning I started working on it. I just kept tinkering with it and making sure that things were the way that I wanted them to be. Went ahead and added, uh, some merch. We now have a, I believe mm -hmm, fully functional <laughs> uh, uh, merch store. So you can go get your swag right over there on ritualmisery.com. T-shirts are back. Yeah. T-shirts are back. All the T-shirts. We got the stickers. We got the coffee mug, all the things. It's all new. It's from a new, a new supplier, new everything. So if you bought stuff before and didn't like it, maybe try it again. If you never bought stuff before, it's at its cheapest prices ever now because I found a completely new supplier that's actually a lot more affordable. You can get a pillow if you want to snuggle up to, to Amos's and my face. <laughs> like, by all means. That's actually, that's actually what Roy said. He went through and he looked at it and he was like, oh, I got to get me that pillow. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. That's only a little creepy. <laughs> I mean, you, you could also get a poster print 24 by 36 of the RMP logo and just smack that right on your wall and proclaim to everybody that you're part of a uh, uh, ritual misery nation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. that man, that is so cool. I, I was really happy to see the store back up. Uh, ritual misery.com is looking a lot better these days. Mm -hmm. And, uh, just because I'm awkward like that and I like to make sure that everybody knows our old store had a $1 markup on everything because everything was already so expensive, but we needed to be able to cover our cost. Now everything has a roughly a $5 markup because everything's a lot cheaper, even with the markup. So you're still contributing to the show. You're not just buying something from some other company that's making a little money. You're actually still contributing to the show. And uh, that's mm -hmm. not my money. That's not Kent's money. It's the show money that we do yep. really cool things with. And now that we have swag, we can actually start doing stuff with it and uh making that a real thing so uh cruise on over to ritualmisery.com slash swag will work it'll redirect and then ritualmisery.com slash support slash swag or just go to ritualmisery.com and hit the little drop down yep and uh all the other links on there are working too the paypal link if you just want to throw a one-time donation at us we're just going to cruise right on into the uh, advertisement uh the patreon link will work the PayPal link will work. The merch store works. All the things are working. And um, if you don't like going to patreon.com because it's kind of a pain in the butt, you can go to ritualmisery.com, log in with your Patreon credentials, and get all your Patreon only posts there as well. So, like, I'm trying to make ritualmisery.com the central hub for all things ritual misery. Uh, the streamathon info is there, like all the stuff. It's all in that one spot, and it's never been more convenient. And I will add, if you are a patron at the ten dollar or more level each month, we now have Patreon swag coming your way after three consecutive months of being ten dollars or higher. And if you are a shit, if I think it's a fifty dollar a month, if you want to. If you want to cough up 50 bucks a month, three months in a row, you will get a one time only as in whoever gets the first one, I'm stopping it there. You'll get, <laughs> you'll get the only, maybe the only of a couple, if everybody signs up at the same time, uh, Patreon exclusive RMP Patreon logo sweatshirt. So there's Freaking all that. Awesome. Yeah. Details at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Hell yeah. So, and that's the first half of our show. We are eight <laughs> minutes in. Hell yes, man. <laughs> um, so we're, we're not just going to do 16 minutes tonight. We're actually going to, we're probably going to go an hour. Maybe. Depends on how bad you lose. <laughs> uh, 
Um, you can play the stinger, right? Go ahead and play the stinger. What this time is that? Ken? He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. Woo! Speaking of which, real quick, Stephen Cogswell is our uh, our highest level patron patron at fifteen dollars a month, and he got a discount code for uh, the merch store today. Heck and, yeah, man! And then immediately told me that the merch store is USA only, so I had to go in there and change that. <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> Man, that's, we, we've gotten a lot of feedback on the site today already. Um, lots, lots of stuff. Um, yeah, good stuff, man. Um, so our game. Uh, you ever heard of Super Fight? I have. <laughs> so Amos and I over the years have on occasion argued with each other uh, quite uh, quite vehemently a few times. The Cifrus and, um, game. Vociferously, I like that word. I think that was actually a, I think I used that word in a quiz one time. Um, <laughs> anyway, so this this game Super Fight is set up just for us because we like to argue. So we're going to argue about who would win in a fight. So basically, the way that the game works, or at least the way that we're going to play it, is that I'm going to draw a card that tells me who who a fighter is. And then a modifier card that's going to tell me, like, oh, you know, he's has a gun or he's got, um, you know, whatever. Uh, something that modifies the character mm -hmm. to give maybe an advantage to the character. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm going to do that for each of us. And then I'm going to draw a location card so that we know what our arena, if you will, is. And then we're going to argue about who's going to win this fight. And then we are going to put it out to the audience to vote on it and that will happen live during the show and this of course will go splendidly it's it's bound to be perfect i meant to put no a little a little uh a stopwatch on the screen and i for totally <laughs> forgot now i can't remember where the option is so we're just gonna have to like not do that um yeah you know i i was thinking about that too i was like should i uh should i implement a uh a timer? Uh, I think we're I think we're fine. I think we can just uh, just go with it. All right, so we're gonna. I've got a couple of different packs here. Um, one of them is an R-rated one. I'm not gonna start out with that one. I'm gonna start uh, with just the basic set, and then we'll see where we go from there. Okay. So all right, so Amos, I'm gonna draw your character first. So oh, damn, you got a mock. Yeah, this is not going to go well. You went digital right as you said what I was. Oh, okay. Well, good, because I'm going to trash that card anyway. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. All right, you got... Oh, damn. You got Darth Vader. Okay. Okay, so just, just for full disclosure here, the card that I did draw was pick a movie character. And I was like, no, let's just go with what we, what we get. So you're Darth Vader... I totally and would then have your modifier. Single, by the way. <laughs> so you have a mustache that can that can stretch and move at will. Oh. So Darth Vader with a mustache that can stretch and move at will. Nice. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's your character. All right. What full do you have? Oh, I've got Hermione. Okay. From Harry Potter. And she can duplicate one opponent attribute. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'm wondering if I should duplicate that mustache that uh, Darth Vader's got. All right. So then our arena. We're going to draw a blue card, which is the arena cards. We're in a nutshell. Okay. All right. <laughs> Oh my God! All right. Um, all right. So, so, so you're the one with the experience. You should explain. You should you should go first to give me the example of how this is supposed to play out. Yeah, I wish I knew. I wish I knew Hermione. Like I wish I knew the, the like the Potterverse um, like magic a little bit better. And uh, but I don't. 
Um, so, so first of all, it says I can duplicate one attribute of Darth Vader. Um, I'm just going to say, uh, in addition to having magical powers and a magic wand, I'll say that I can also use the Force. I'm going to duplicate that attribute of Darth Vader. Okay. Um, yeah, so, all right, so we're in a nutshell. Uh, all right, Hermione. Hermione is going to cast a magic spell on Darth Vader that... Uh, traps his mind and like puts him into like a uh, like a like a mind prison, so that he can't use his force powers. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. But as soon as he starts feeling the tingle of the mind uh, from the magic spell, he actually phases himself out and into her mind. Through the Force. Through the Force. Well, like since Hermione has the Force as well in this scenario, she's going to block him from entering her mind. And with her distracted, he throws his lightsaber at her, using the Force to guide it for a lethal, lethal blow. Right. And as the lightsaber is coming toward Hermione, she uses her magic wand to deflect the lightsaber away from her. But it slices the magic wand in half, and now he uses his choke force, slamming her up against the wall and choking the life out of her. And, and Hermione is using her force powers to also choke Darth Vader and slam him against the wall. Or the, I guess the, the inner shell. Of the, <laughs> the inner shell. shell the inner <laughs> shell. Uh, the force of Hermione slamming Vader against the shell because he is so large shatters many pieces. He uses those to grab with the force and throws them at, as projectiles at Hermione. Mm, okay. Um, so the, the magic wand is broken. So I don't, this is where knowledge of the Potterverse would come in handy. Do they require the, the wand to, to use magic? I don't know. Hmm. I say this is a good place to end the fight because that uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll leave that decision up to the audience. <sighs> All right. This is kind of like playing Amber in the uh, the the role playing game where you basically are at a, a a match of wits. Except in Amber, everything's possible. Like literally, anything's possible because you're a god walking along a mortal plane. I I am not familiar with that game. Yeah, the rules are basically, here's your heritage, uh, go imagine shit. All right, your next character is Sasquatch. <laughs> and the Sasquatch relies on heat vision to see. That's lame. So that's not necessarily an advantage. No. All right. So my character is Frankenstein. So I'm I'm going to take that as being the Frankenstein monster. Right. Not not Doctor Frankenstein. Doctor Frankenstein. Yeah. Right. Okay. And okay, at least they're equally sized. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, funny you should say so. Frankenstein is actually 100 stories tall. Oh wow. Okay. <gasps> oh my gosh. All right. And our arena is LA traffic. Nice. <gasps> nice. Oh dear God. Um okay. All right, Sasquatch I, I, with uh, relying on heat vision to see versus Frankenstein, who is a hundred uh, one hundred stories tall. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out a limb here and just say the Sasquatch, um, is just going to hop on a car and ride away. Cause I don't think Frankenstein has <laughs> any internal combustion, like any, any, he's not cold, like warm blooded. So he doesn't generate any heat, mm. but I don't, I don't, Good uh, point. Um, but assuming he does, since he is a, a semi, like he's built of other people's body parts all sewn together and shit, um, he's not, he's not undead per se. Uh, hmm. Sasquatch will begin by jumping from car to car, 
and basically making himself as uh, 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 mobile a target as possible. Okay, so 100 stories tall Frankenstein is just going to start kicking the shit out of all the cars on on the what is this the 405 uh, the, is it gonna be the 405 yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right so all so everybody um, wants to kick the shit out of the cars on the 405 <laughs> yes yeah, so frankenstein is going to uh be the the wish fulfillment of of everybody that's ever driven in la and just start kicking the shit out of all the cars uh going towards sasquatch and trying to squash him or or uh, trap him between wrecked cars or something Ah, uh, gotcha. Now Sasquatch is going to start ducking and diving between buildings, going down mm. alleys. In L.A. traffic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, have you been in L.A. traffic? So, there's buildings everywhere. That's why it sucks so, so bad. <laughs> there's there's not a whole lot of 100-story tall buildings in L.A., there's at least not. none that I, not, I don't even know if there are any. Um. So uh, Frankenstein can can easily track the movements of Sasquatch as he basically just just tears through the city, basically doing a Godzilla, just knocking shit over in his in his attempts to get to Sasquatch to squish him. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 about right. And Frankenstein doesn't <laughs> feel pain, right? So he doesn't know that he's uh, he's he's actually scraping his his sew sewings, his stitches. <laughs> Against the buildings as he's rushly crick, uh, kicking the buildings over, and Sasquatch notices this, jumps up as high as he can, and grabs onto a dangling string and starts shimmying up the dangling string. I uh, see. So Frankenstein, uh, from his vantage point, is going to see this happening. So he's just going to just try to grab Sasquatch and squish his ass. His uh, tiny ass. <laughs> and, and see what the problem is when he does that, he lifts up his leg to reach to reach the, the Sasquatch hanging from the thread, grabs the Sasquatch and the thread, and kills both of them at the same time. <laughs> all right. Um Yeah, all right. So that's uh we'll leave that one up to the audience to see who they think would actually win that one. Uh, that one was awful. That's yeah. That was that was a mismatch. I think. Um, all right. So we'll do one more from the regular deck, and then we'll go to the R-rated one after this. Okay. All right. So your next character is a cheetah. Ooh. Okay. With hands for feet. Hands for feet. Hands for feet. Hands for feet. Uh oh. God can only move when a opponent. Can only move when the opponent moves. So Cheetah. Moves. Yes. Okay. All right. So my character is going to be. Oh dear God! What a matchup here. A cat. Oh. And watch it'll have cat-like oh. reflexes. Right, 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 right. Oh, it has telekinesis. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! All right. In our arena for this battle. Is a space station. Space station. <sighs> oh dear God. Okay, so the cat, I assume, knows that the cheetah can't move if the cat doesn't move. So the cat is gonna use his telekinesis <laughs> to crush the 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 skull of the cheetah. I while I'm not saying you don't win, I'm going to come up with a better story. The cat is going to activate the airlock and then dislodge that arm of the space station and let the cheetah just wander around, not fucking moving while it suffocates to death. Oh, damn. Yeah. No, that yeah. Okay. cat with so telekinesis that's... clearly beats a cheetah that can't move. Yeah. <laughs> God, I thought I the last one mismatch this was uh this, well 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 you know what we'll we'll still we'll 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 put it to a poll and we'll see uh <laughs> we'll see what the audience says yeah all right yeah. So now, those both ended the same way whose ending was better that's what the poll should be on that one <laughs> right right all right so now we're gonna go to the red deck which is the rated r deck 
So this has all kinds of craziness in it. Your character <laughs> is a human centipede. Are you familiar with this concept of a human centipede? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> all right. The modifier is uh, just dropped acid. So you're a human centipede that just dropped acid. <laughs> My character, oh Jesus, a saber toothed vagina. <laughs> uh, and is really stoned. So, <laughs> so some drug some drug use going on here. Um, all right, our arena is going to be inside a giant whale. <gasps> wow. All right, so, a fight between a human centipede that just dropped acid and a saber-toothed saber vagina that's really stoned. It's going to take place inside of a giant whale. All right. You're up first yeah. this time. Uh, so the, the, the saber-toothed vagina, um, if, if, it can, uh, <laughs> if it can collect its thoughts long enough, it is going to... Uh, Bite the human centipede really hard with its saber teeth. The uh, that's great because the human centipede, being high on acid, can't feel pain and doesn't recognize reality. Tears itself apart by the person ripping each other's assholes out of their mouths and then eating <laughs> the saber tooth vagina in a swarm like the fucking reavers on. Firefly. Oh my god. Um yeah, so I, I think the vagina is just going to just start biting and chewing and trying <laughs> like hell to just bite its way out of the situation. Um No I, the human I don't, a, I don't know what a saber tooth vagina does <laughs> <laughs> other than bites. Uh gets eaten. That's what's going on here right now. So, um, the human centipede, so the human centipede is going to eat this pussy. Um, to this death. is wow. I'm not drunk enough for this. <laughs> I'm sure there's porn of this. If anybody just just like open up a um, a um, uh, uh, incognito browser. And look for human centipede eating a saber tooth vagina, and it probably exists. Uh, was it Rule Thirty Seven? Uh, rule. Oh wow, I forgot what it is. Yeah, whatever uh, rule it is, it applies here. Yes, yes. Um, hang on, I got, I gotta look that up. <laughs> rule. Uh, rules of the internet. Rule Thirty Four. Oh, rule 37 is there are no girls in the internet, which is, I mean. Yeah, so rule, rule 34 states, according to a long state, or no, 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 not long state. Okay, rule 34 goes, if it exists or can be imagined, there is internet porn of it. Yep. Yep. We should do an episode just on internet rules. Oh, that would actually, ooh, ooh, that'd be a fun game. That's what the that's what the the saber tooth vagina said as the human centipede was eating it. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, your next character. This would have been an interesting opponent for for my last one. Um, your next character is a huge dick. So me. <laughs> Not what I have, what I am. Got it. Wow, this is a great combination. A huge dick that can literally talk the pants off anyone. Oh, <clears throat> I've got, <laughs> I've got a Japanese schoolgirl. <laughs> oh no, um, that can only attack opponents' genitals. <laughs> Convenient. You had but to set this up, dude. There's no way this is random. <laughs> this is totally random. I swear to God. I swear to God. All right, let's see what the arena is. Um, okay, a deep sea submarine is the arena. 
Oh my god, I can't wait for the Twitter polls on this. Oh my god. All right, a huge dick that can literally talk the pants off anyone, or a Japanese schoolgirl that can only attack opponents' genitals. In a and they're fighting I, in a deep submarine. I am gonna go on the record and say that, by my estimation, this Japanese schoolgirl is 19 years old and is fully legal in all aspects in every way. Yep, 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 absolutely. And so by schoolgirl, it's a college student. Yes, yes, university student. student. Yep, uh, exactly. Yep. Um, the huge dick's just going to start talking to her. <laughs> so, I mean, by the, okay. So that, that means that she loses her pants, um, which is fine because that gives her more mobility. Uh, less clothing is, uh, uh, you know, freeze frees up her uh, limberness i guess mm -hmm. so uh she's just going to and, and so she can only attack opponent's genitals but the opponent is a genital um so it's just it's, it's just full on um full on attack like i'm talking punches and kicks and claws and 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 bites and uh like well this is a japanese schoolgirl so i can only assume that she knows ninjutsu so uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Luckily, she, is... she wasn't wearing her samurai outfit today, and the huge <laughs> dick takes her pants that she is, which are actually just stockings, and uses them to bind her arms behind her back. Okay, yeah, and she's just gonna keep kicking and biting. Um, martial arts has a lot of uh, devastating kicks. Yeah, and yep. Uh, I can only imagine how that would feel on a dick. Uh, it's not gonna be. It's not gonna be pleasant for the huge dick, right? But there's no real weak points in in a, in a huge dick because it's not like a dick and balls where she could just like pummel the balls. Like it's just it's just a big dick. So, uh, however, he's just gonna get some of that shaft hair and and tie that around <laughs> her legs. <laughs> shaft hair. <laughs> oh my god. So I. I'm trying to figure out how the dick is going to to tie things up when when a dick doesn't have arms or or hands. We're we're, ta we're talking about a sentient dick here. <laughs> like it's just gonna pop arms out like SpongeBob. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop. Uh, yeah. So all right, all right. A huge dick or a Japanese schoolgirl. <laughs> God damn it! This is so bad. So bad. <sighs> oh fuck okay your next opponent is my next it, opponent your, your next, my next avatar your next oh, there we go is a doomsday cult okay who can shoot webs out of your anus the whole cult can shoot webs out of their anus Yes. That's some mighty fine Kool-Aid. <laughs> I am represented by a ghost of an aborted fetus. Okay. Jesus Christ. All right. And is armed with a lube fire hose. Oh, dear God. All right. Where are we fighting? On a giant trampoline. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, so the ghost of an aborted fetus, I mean all right, it's a ghost. Mm -hmm. Right? So the physics of the trampoline, I don't feel are going to affect the ghost. Um, so you've got this entire doomsday cult on a trampoline. Um, going up against a ghost who's armed with a lube fire hose. So obviously the opening move is to open up the fire hose on this colt and just cover them completely with with a very slimy, slippery substance, which also gets on the surface of the trampoline, hmm. which makes it uh, not only bouncy, but very slick. No, that, that's, that's definitely a problem. Um, and 
being that it is so slick, the cult members would fall off and land on the ground, uh, semi in the fetal position, but mostly just with their with their butts in the air, and they oh. would start firing off web projectiles <laughs> at the ghost in order to uh, 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 weigh down and sink its little lube gun. Right, right, right. So the, the web uh, obviously isn't going to affect the ghost because the ghost is is incorporeal and um, uh, unaffected by any of that. But the, the lube fire hose, I could see. Um, um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and consider the, uh, the lube fire hose out of the equation for the most part. But it, it doesn't take away the lube that's already just absolutely mm-hmm. everywhere. So the ghost is going to use its its um, um, I don't know its phantasma force power whatever and just just uh, wreck the cult members shit um, both physically and and uh, in their mind. Well, considering there wasn't there much there to begin with, the the effects on the mind are pretty much nil. <laughs> However, now that they have the uh, the lube gun, uh, they just take that and start using it on each other, <laughs> thereby disgusting the ghost and making him run away. <laughs> I want to know how you would discuss in discussed un- unsightly in- and unseemly ways. Yeah, like and oh, I wonder what the threshold of disgust is though for an aborted fetus. Oh my god, that's that's, that's, that's legit. I, I I think that's five, man. Do we leave it there or do we go for two more? Um, let's go two more. Let's go two more. Okay. Um, I think we've got time for that. Do you want to do uh, one not rated R one, and then go back to rated R? You want them to both be rated R? I say we go rated R and then finish with a vanilla. Okay, all right. Kind of Works bring it, bring it back down before we head on out of here. <laughs> all right, uh, your <laughs> wait wait. Uh, this time I'm 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 gonna change the rules on you. This time, take that card and put it away. I don't know what it is, but to put it away. Okay, I want you to draw a card from random out of that pile, and then I'm going to judge whether or not I want that card or I want you to have it based on the facial expressions you have. <laughs> okay, so I gotta. So it's not going to be the card I just drew. Um, all the cards are randomized. I have no idea, so I'm just going to pull from the top. So I'm going to look at the card and react a little bit, and then you're going to choose if you want it. Yes. Or am I going to read it and you say if you want No, it. no. Uh, all based only on your reaction to that card. Okay. And I all don't right. get to know what it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I'll take it. You're going to take it? Yep. Okay. All right. You get the ghost of Osama bin Laden. Oh, nice. Okay. So we got another ghost. All right. Another ghost. All right. And the modifier is... Oh. <laughs> the ghost of Osama bin Laden is breastfeeding a... And then I have to draw another card to tell you what it's, what he's breastfeeding. Okay. Oh, God bless America. The ghost of Osama bin Laden is breastfeeding a 60-year-old stripper. <laughs> Okay. Oh my god. My character is Kim Jong Il. <laughs> Living Kim Jong Il, I assume, because uh it doesn't say ghost of or the right. corpse of or right. anything. Um throws used hypodermic needles. Okay. Okay, and the fight is taking place in a mine. So, so home, home territory for me. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> oh, shit. All right, so the ghost of Osama bin Laden breastfeeding a 60-year-old stripper is fighting Kim Jong-il who throws used hypodermic needles in a mine. Okay. Uh, Kim Jong-il is going to use the breastfeeding 60-year-old stripper as a human shield. Oh, and... you mean uh, go the ghost of Osama bin Laden? Yeah, is going to use the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as a human shield. I know, I'm starting off the def defense again. Ah, uh, okay. Um, right, so, I mean, Kim Jong-il is going to use his, his best attack, which is throwing hypodermic needles, mm -hmm. um, which um, I'm going to say are probably filled with uh, poison. Okay. Um, some sort of fast-acting, like strychnine or something like that, um, and just start flinging these damn things at his opponent. Okay. Uh, the ghost of Osama bin Laden will, uh, let out a yell, whatever fucking sound he wants to make. And the other six 60 year old strippers come out of the other caves <laughs> to surround Kim Jong-il. <laughs> oh my God. So he's just, he's just throwing hypodermic needles like in every direction, just 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 taking out these sixty year old strippers, while he's trying to devise some way to attack a ghost. <laughs> I don't know where we go from here. <laughs> With another command, all the six year sixty year old strippers lift up their shirts and phase. <laughs> Kim Jong Il with their boobies, <laughs> and then Osama, it, it, the ghost of Osama, in goes in, in into possesses uh, Kim Jong Il, and then takes his hypodermic needles and stabs himself again and again and again. <laughs> and with the death of Kim Jong Il, the ghost of Osama bin Laden finally gets peace and can move on to the afterlife. All right, audience, what do you think? Is that how it would go? Oh, my. I think I'm glad God. we're not politicians. Yeah. Uh, wow. Whew. Okay. Um, so we're going back to the vanilla box. Yeah. All right. Um, so your character is a giraffe. Got it. That one. Oh, that's we already did that one. We're not doing that one again. Armed with a crowbar. So a giraffe armed with a crowbar. Nice. Is going up against a zombie that's nine feet tall. So much synergy in this game. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, the arena is going to be... Oh, huh, possibly an advantage for the draft. It's going to be a zoo. So, so I don't know if that's an advantage or a disadvantage, really. Um, all right, so a giraffe armed with a crowbar is fighting a zombie, a nine-foot-tall zombie in a zoo. Um, all right, so I think the zombie is um, obviously going to try to eat the giraffe's brain. Uh, so he's going to um, meander his way over to the, to the giraffe, which isn't going to take very long because he's nine feet tall. So he's got very long legs. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, but he's going to slowly walk over to the giraffe. My brain. The giraffe is going to look at the zombie, look around at all his giraffe friends in the zoo there with him, give a nod over at the gorilla in the cage next door, and think to himself, man, what a lucky day. I happen to have a blunt in instrument against a zombie. And he is just going to start smacking that zombie in the head with the crowbar again and again 
and again. While the hyenas you know, laugh and the raccoons chirt. Chirt. Uh, I like that word. Um, yeah, I don't so know I was, word, I was but... going to make a, 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 an argument that, that no, 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 the zombie is nine feet tall. Like, that's, that's, but I forgot. Giraffe. A giraffe is tall as fuck, too. <laughs> Giraffes are so like they're... 13 feet tall. So, what's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. So I mean the zombie really only has one move and it's just to, to, to bite and uh you know just try to grab the giraffe and and just start chewing. Yeah. Yeah. Zombie's yeah. just gonna keep beating his brains in or the uh, the giraffe's <laughs> just gonna keep beating his brains in while the other giraffes come around and start kicking him in the like like healing him from behind. <laughs> As, as, as they fart web sauce on him to slow him down even more. Web sauce? <laughs> they learned that from their oh. cult buddies. <laughs> oh, dear God. Um, <laughs> yeah, so so that's that's super fight. Uh, we were neither high nor drunk enough for that game. Yeah, but, so the game, the game like in, in real life, like in person, it works like uh, Cards Against Humanity. Where your, you know, all the players at the table vote. Yeah. Uh, so it usually gets a lot more animated and noisy because everybody wants to to shout at each other and. Uh, um, yeah, it's it's a pretty fun game, but it's it requires creativity and um, you got to be very outgoing to make it fun. Um, yeah. So. Well, cool. dude. Um couple things we need to touch on and i'm, I'm ashamed to, to say this right now happy birthday jamie josephson even though we don't want you listening to this episode ever <laughs> yes happy birthday jenny you are awesome and you deserve to have a wonderful wonderful day um i have a question for you dude yes what's up like, are we even friends? No, hear me out. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Hear me out. If you have a friend, a non-relation friend, like not someone that you're friends with, it's also like your second cousin's ex-husband or something. If you have a friend and you've known them for 30 years mm-hmm. and... They on the telephone say, Good night, man. Love you. And you can't with a bold face and no smirk in your in your eyes go, Love you too. Are you even friends? Like, is that a thing? Because we've known each other for going on 30 years now. Like, it's gotta be at least 30 years, right? Like, I don't know, something like that. Probably somewhere right around 30 years. Yeah, probably just shy of 30. Yeah. And I got to tell you, dude, I love you, man. Like, I love you, too. This has been an amazing experience, amazing life doing this podcast, catching up with you on old shit, doing stupid games that are probably going to get us in trouble in, uh, during the next uh, the next flare-up of cancel culture. Um, just like if you don't wave at your neighbors like this, are you really neighbors? <laughs> right like yeah it's uh it's it's getting to be thanksgiving we're not going to do a show next week because it is thanksgiving that is our mm-hmm. annual break even on the years when we <clears throat> we're doing a show every single week without fail we don't do it on thanksgiving mm-hmm. um but look look at your uh i mean if, if covid has taught you anything it's that you can probably do without about half the fucking people in your life <laughs> right. Let the other <laughs> half know that they're in that other half that you don't want to live without. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um yeah, I I um I definitely take the opportunity to tell my friends that I love them uh completely unironically. Um yeah, it's it's it, it's a good thing to do. Like when you when you start telling people you care about that you love them, uh, it just feels good. It just Yep. It's nice. It's nice. And it's important. It's important for, for people that you care about to hear that from you. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And our next big event, we will be back after Thanksgiving. Uh, the 
shit. What is it like the first of December, the second of December, something like that? Um, third, I think. Hang on. Yeah. Um, I will pull it up. Yes, this is the third. Okay. Our next episode will be on the third of December. So we'll be back on the third of December. We might do something next week, but it won't be an official episode. We might just have a phone call and hang out or whatever in Discord or something. Um, but uh, meanwhile, the next big event we have will be ramping up for the streamathon, the DC streamathon, which uh. Is, yep. it, is, and is getting going now. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got a lot of people volunteered for that. If, you, um, if you're hearing this and you want to stream and you haven't signed up yet, uh, uh, yellow420.com slash 2020 streamathon. Uh, there's still a few slots left, so uh, you do have a chance to get in there. So go yep. do that. Um, and then we've also, before that, um, Richard Gunther with our annual uh, year-end wrap-up is going to take place. I'm not sure exactly which which week that's going to be, but we're we're working on that right now. Yep. Um so that's that's going to be awesome and then of course streamathon and then um then it's going to be 2021, man. Thank we're almost done with this godforsaken year. Thank goodness. Um real quick. <clears throat> if you have a good story but you probably shouldn't tell it, shouldn't you just tell it anyway? <laughs> I think you should. Yeah. I have confirmed that we're going to get a live New Year's Eve themed Tell It Anyway from Jenny Josephson and Matt Flanagan on the Streamathon. That is so freaking exciting that to me. Is this, is, this is some of the best news that I've gotten in quite a while. I love that podcast. And I've already said I love Jenny. Um, I haven't met Matt, but um, I really, really enjoy listening to him talk. He is a wonderful storyteller. And, uh, man, to have Jenny and Matt together for let, uh, Tell It Anyway on the Streamathon, yeah. like, dude, 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 that is going to be absolutely amazing. That is can't miss. Sarah Lane is confirmed. Tom Merritt is soft yes, like uh, I would say like medium yes, like he just ha he needs to figure out his time slot for a, a live thing he's gonna do, and special appearances by Santa Claus. Mm. We have a promo by Santa Claus that will premiere on our next show. Nice, good old Saint Nick. And this isn't like some mall Santa that's just like filling the role because he's got a fat belly and a big white beard. This is like legit from the North Pole, filmed it myself, can confirm, 10 out of 10 would recommend the real fucking Santa. <laughs> Reindeers and everything. Amazing. And Amazing. Mrs. Claus. Amazing. Oh, and the Mrs. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, dude. Uh, where can people find out awesome. more about you? Yeah, on Twitter, probably RM underscore Del Noche. What about you, man? Uh, Twitter, uh, E T H A N C A I N E, Ethan Kane on the Twitter. Nice. Of course, you can always follow the show at ritualmisery.com. Or, well, yeah, <laughs> ritualmisery.com or ritual misery on Twitter. Um, <laughs> yeah, but what, what we would love for you guys to do is jump in our Discord. Uh, participate in the games along with us and um, hang out with us for, for post-show. And that's yeah. over at bit.ly slash RMP Discord. And, of course, you can find all these, and I say this every fucking week, we can find all these and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. This time I truly mean it. It's actually there. Mm -hmm. can confirm. <laughs> Um, and we are live every Thursday ish, 7 p.m. Pacific ish, and diamondclub.tv-ish and twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. Uh, a lot of inside jokes on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and I'm stalling for time because I hit the button late. And for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> See ya. Let's see if my new closer works. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>
R I T U A L M I S E L Y. Hell yeah, bro. Nice. Nice. I even it. set it up to where after it plays a video, underneath the video is our video. So when it stops playing the video, it fades into us on the main screen. And then it just then I just click the button and it jumps back to here and they can't even tell. Except I just I just told them. <laughs> oh, that's great.